Now, preparations are underway to repatriate to Botswana the bodies of the 45 people that were killed in the horrific bus crash last week. Only an eight-year-old girl survived and is still recovering and uh, receiving medical treatment in hospital in Limpopo. The people that died when the bus lost control, fell over a bridge and caught fire on the R18, uh, that's the R518, R518 at the Matlakala bridge between uh, Marken and Mokopane on Thursday. So the bus was transporting people from Khabarone in Botswana to the St. Engenis Zion Church of Christ for the Easter pilgrimage. With us now, we've got the Limpopo Health MEC, Dr. Apopi Ramatuba, who's going to provide us an update on the process of identifying the victims of this tragic incident. MEC, thank you. Thank you very, very much for joining us on the program. Uh, good, good morning and, and morning to all your viewers. And of course, uh, once more, uh, our heartfelt condolences to the people of Botswana, especially the families and the friends of those that have lost their lives yeah. during that tragic case. And, and certainly it is a very tragic time, especially over the Easter weekend, coming, traveling, um, to go and attend services and then, you know, losing your life. But let's, let's unfortunately sort of talk about all of the logistics around this, if you don't mind, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ramatuba. In terms of the bodies, have they all been retrieved now from the site of the bus crash? You know, it's very difficult to, to, to say they've all been retrieved because, as, as I've indicated earlier on to one of your colleagues on Friday, it is that we, we, we have received the, the body bags of the remains. When we refer to them as remains, it's because up to so far, we are not exactly sure what is inside one body bag. I'm saying this because out of the 41 that we have received so far, the body bags, it's only uh, the, the nine that we spoke about that could be positively identified. And of those nine, uh, six already families have come on board and we have been able to positively identify. The, the rest of them, they, we started uh, as early as Saturday with radiology studies in in those remains and and now that comes that explanation that I, I i gave you that one body bag you might find that we've got three femur bones so that simple tells you it's those those remains don't belong to an individual mm -hmm. and they could be belonging to two we we we, we even with another one where we found the two uh, similar hip bones so so that it's, it's what we have been saying uh, when the accident occurred, what happened, the body suffered two types of injuries. The physical damage because of when the bus crashed and rolling. And the second one, which was the heat uh, damage where it bent beyond recognition. Mm. So you'll find that during the process of physical damage, two bodies or two human beings were clubbed together and they bent together. So hence, we can't is say we have retrieved all of them or not. Yeah. This process of radiology examination, it's also assisting us. The second process will be the DNA itself, mm. which will be able to tell us in one body bag how many individuals were there Indeed. because the remains will not belong to one. I imagine at this time it's also been quite difficult due to the, the, the long weekend that has been taking place. So um, it's, it's working on more of a, you know, a, um, a skeleton staff more than anything. But let's perhaps talk on a timeline now. So just the numbers, not much changing. Nine identified, six positively claimed and identified by family members as well. Um, there's still a long way to go in terms of completing DNA tests. When does that begin? Has it already begun? And when are we hoping? we can perhaps get some, some closure on this as well. What we could indicate is that we are in constant communication with the uh, officials and, and uh, technocrats, the laboratory for Mutuan, so that they can assist us with the process of them sampling the DNA of those next of kin so that we can utilize them for comparison. They've indicated to us that they are almost at 95% completion. 
Okay. So we are expecting them during the week after they would have done their analysis to join our team in South Africa. So with us, as early as tomorrow, which is Tuesday, like you are rightfully saying, it is a very difficult time because as it is for now, we have got more than 71 other uh, bodies as a result of road accident. And, and the, we still have got other stab wounds, we still have got drowning. If I, I, we currently, in, in the province, have got more than 112 um, remains of human beings that must undergo autopsy. So our team, even today, they've decided, we've recalled even those who are on holiday to mm. start with the postmortems of the other cases so that tomorrow we are then be able to beef up the team at Mukopane at Waterpeg so that even those who are in Skukune, those, the pathologists in, in, in uh, Mubani, in Bembe, they all must be able to report to as early as tomorrow in Mukopani so that we start with the process of a postmortem and autopsy of dissecting all these 41 remains that we have to assist us with the process. With the other uh, six that are already identified or the nine, we'll be able to do a straightforward postmortem. But with these other ones, yeah. we must be focusing on getting uh, the, the the specimen that would be required for DNA sampling, so that when the Botswana counterparts come, and, and because General Mulauzi has put up two teams, the team in South Africa and also the team uh, to be working with the Botswana, then we'll be able to start. So I, I can say uh, this week we'll be focusing on getting the specimen to go for subnational for forensic, uh, for DNA uh, analysis. So it's going to be a long journey. But but as South Africans, we know the pain of having to lose your friends and relatives when they've gone to church. If you remember in 2014, we, we, it was a very difficult situation for the families. Hence, learning from that experience, we would want the people of Botswana not to go through what we did. We would want this process and uh, do everything in our power as directed uh, by the president and also in our province by the premier to say, please, let's do this and, and assist our people and, and people from Botswana so that they can find closure on what has happened. And the more we prolong this process, we know it becomes very much more painful because this is a tragedy that I can tell you, Leanne, in my entire life, uh, even as a practicing clinician, I've never have to encounter or deal with a tragedy like this one. Yeah, it's, it certainly has been. We've seen, we've been um, looking at, at the, the, you know, the, the, the whole circumstance around this, this particular accident and one can only imagine what, uh, you know, the victims did look like. And I mean, I think you're explaining to us how difficult this has been. Um, MEC, I'm going to ask you to just pause for one moment. We need to get into our news bulletin. However, this is the top story in our news bulletin. So we'll continue to talk to the MEC MEC about plans uh, about the repatriation and the investigation into this. So let's roll our sting, get into the news, continue this interview, and then we certainly will bring you the other stories as well. Right, a very good morning to you. It is the 1st of April. It's 8 o'clock here on Morning Live. Thanks so very much for choosing um, SABC for your news. Well, preparations are underway to repatriate to Botswana the bodies of the 45 people who died in a horrific bus crash last week. With us, we have the ELF MEC, Dr. Poppy Ramatuba, who has confirmed that uh, pathologists will start to conduct post-mortems on the bodies of the 45 five people who died in that crash that was on Thursday last week. Nine have been identified, six have been positively claimed by families, but there's still a long way to go in terms of trying to sort out all of this. The Botswana authorities are also engaging their South African counterparts on the repatriation of the bodies, and this crash took place on the R518 at the Matlakala Bridge between Marken and Mokopane, and the bus was transporting people people from Gaberone in Botswana to the St. Nengenes Zion Christian Church at Moria in Limpopo for the Easter service when this happened. Let's continue our conversation now with the Limpopo Health MEC who is joining us, Dr. Um, Poppy Ramatuba. Uh, again, MEC, we thank you so much for staying on with us during this time. So in terms of um, 
the, 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 the bodies that have already been claimed by families or have been, you know, that they've been identified. We know a post-mortem needs to be done. Are they able to go back to Botswana or would you like to uh, have the process completely finished and then repatriate all of the bodies at the same time? How will that process work? I think Lien we will be guided by the people of Botswana, especially the families and the government of Botswana to say, how would they prefer this to be done? But but what should happen with the, especially the, the six that are already positively identified? A postmortem will be done tomorrow where in the, the, the pathologist will be able to issue the notice. Uh, the, then, then the home affairs will be able to issue the death certificate. Then the, the funeral uh, parlor who would be identified must issue a cover letter requesting the repatriation by permit. And as I've indicated, because we work with all these di di different uh, departments, we we will need, uh, of course, Home Affairs will also be central. Our DECO will also be central. A BMA also through Home Affairs will also be central because the, the National Department of Health, which must also issue the letter uh, to, to indicate that uh, this uh, body has been cleared, uh, working with our pathologists in the province from any other infection. So it's still a process mm. that requires other sister departments uh, to finally allow the, the bodies to be repatriated. Uh, but with the, with the other, other remaining, uh, uh, we will have to first get the DNA that will positively identify them. So, so based on that, we will be able to now say, um, uh, follow the process like we would be doing with these ones that are positively identified. Yeah. So, MEC, in terms of the, the bus company that was transporting um, the, the worshippers uh, 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 when this tragic uh, accident happened. I imagine there's also going to be an investigation into the bus company. And please tell me, I don't, I don't want to step onto territory that you are not in charge of, obviously. So please just tell us what you can and cannot comment on. But was this a South African or a Botswana bus company? And obviously they're in investigation or under investigation to still find out what was going on, whether the bus wasn't in a, a good condition all of those things, those, those investigations must be very well underway as well. Yeah, as you have correctly indicated that uh, this is a, a responsibility for South African police service. But what happens normally in any accident scene, the first people to respond must be the emergency medical services so that they can identify the survivors and rush them to the hospital. The, the traffic department must also uh, be on because that is their competence uh, in terms of the road accidents. And police must also be on board. So because we've been working as that collective since the beginning of this tragedy, uh, uh, South African police services and the transport department are the ones who have been able to assist us to even understand that the total number that we are working towards is 46 as I've indicated, that the body bags will not tally with the number. So they assist us to, to understand that as forensic, whatever we're doing is towards that 46. So how did they pick it up? Also, there was a registration number that they could be able to pick up that this is a Botswana a, a bus, and, and they've been able to trace working with the government of Botswana, the owner of the bus, who has been very cooperative, and has been able to give us even the list of those who were in the bus, we've been comparing it with the list from BMA and what we have received as forensic. So, so I can indicate to you that there's no single accident in the country that South African a police service and a department of transport it does not uh, in investigate. That's why you saw Minister Chukunga mm. was one of the first people to arrive on the scene because they would make sure that and the bus, if there's the what was the main cause of the accident, what could have so that work they are busy doing, and they will be able to come back to the public at the right time and be able to inform us. So, yeah. as, as for now, we must just be reassured that yes, uh, the bus owner is known and the bus owner is cooperating with the South African government in order for us 
to be able to find a, a closure because what is left currently is to make sure that the families that have lost their loved ones find closure. And the only way they can find closure is when their remains are brought back to Botswana and they are able to lay them to rest and give them a befitting send-off. And the child that has survived is able to recover fully and be able to go back and be reunited with her community. Yeah, so that is indeed. what we are currently as South African government focusing on. Okay. So, um, MEC, thank you for that. And certainly it was good to see the minister who was possibly one of the first on the scene because she was involved in a public engagement that wasn't far from there at all. My final question to you is, and I think many people wanting to know, how the little eight-year-old girl is doing because she's the sole survivor of this crash. We know that her mother, well, what we were hearing is that her mother is with her. Please, you will confirm that with us. She was traveling with her grandmother. How is her condition? How is she doing? Any news if she's able to return home uh, at, 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 you know, soon? Or perhaps let me just leave it with you to give us an update on the little girl. Uh, we can indeed confirm that one of the uh, our priority was to make sure that in order to to speed up the recovery for this child who has not only been physically traumatized but we believe strongly for obvious reason that psychologically she has been traumatized and without a psychological support uh, the physical injuries might take time to heal. Therefore, we have been successful, been able to arrange uh, that the, the mother be reunited with her. And we want to, to appreciate um, the, the, the citizens of Mukopani, that one of the owners of the lodge, when we, we, we have this challenge, just came on board and said, we, if they are prepared to make sure that the stay of the family here, it's, it's for free. That's what tells you about how South Africans are, you know, sometimes you will appreciate to be a citizen of this country when you have to deal with um, business people, individuals like that, who said you don't mention our us, but this is what we can do. And the mother it, and, the, and the uncle, they are comfortable, accommodated there so that they can be closer to the child. Mm -hmm. The child physically, uh, physical injuries have been well attended to. She, she undergo gone a minor procedure in, in theatre, uh, on, a, on a New Year's Day, and, and the surgeon said it, it was just a minor one, we must, uh, and, and the child is doing well. I was with the child. We, we are very, um, really comforted uh, that this is a real and miraculous child who needs our prayers and our support, not, not being harassed uh, uh, by the media, the mother wanting, wanting to be interviewed. Both the, the mother and the child are not ready to take any interviews. But, but they just need uh, our prayers and our protection. At the right time, they would be able to talk. But for now, uh, whatever happens, we know everyone is eager to want to get a scoop and interview the mother. Let, let, allow me to protect uh, the mother and especially the child and, and let them be given that privacy and let thank God for their lives mm. to say at the right time, they would be able to tell us uh, what could have happened for now it might damage the child permanently. Remember also, the mother has lost her own uh, mother on the scene. So, so this is a one area where we, we are also providing the psychosocial support, even for the mother, the psychologist, it's with her and also with the child. We we'll, we'll put a team of psychologists to can be able to assist and, and they're doing that. We are working with our sister department, social development, so that even the families as they come, to identify the social workers joined our team in health in terms of debriefing. So that's what I can tell you to say, South Africans, let's pray for the child. She's doing very well, very soon. Uh, if we give her space and the doctor space, they will be discharged and go back to one. Ah. MEC, thank you. Thank you very, very much for updating us about this, this very tragic story and certainly um, our thoughts, prayers and best wishes, especially with the little girl and her mom, but with a team that is dealing with this, this very difficult and sensitive issue. Uh, Dr. Papi Ramatuba, of course, is the Limpopo Health MEC, giving us an update on the situation with regard to those that were involved in that bus crash that happened last week, Thursday, and uh, with the process of repatriation and uh, identification. All right, more stories to come.